everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be answering your questions that you left on my community tab the other day. I posted up, you know, Q&A, asked me some questions for a future video. I think that was like yesterday or the day before. Today is that video. Today is the Q&A answers, guys. So if you left me a question, I hope you're tuning in to see if I answer it and everything like that. But yeah, man, I'm just going to rally it off and just go down these questions and maybe we'll get some interesting ones or just whatever. And I'm going to do my best and give you my best answer answer that I possibly can. So with that being said guys, let's go ahead and dive into our first question and that is going to come from my man No Limits Wrestling who asks, is there any story you'd go back and change in the MDT pick fed? For example, is there a match you wished you'd made or a story that in hindsight you wish you'd taken in a different direction? And honestly, not as much really like like a story I would change, but there are certain aspects about the pick fed that I would change, like uh, like the way I filmed it or, uh, you know, the quality of said things. Like, you know, in the beginning of the pick fed, the first few shows and then the first couple pay-per-views or so, I would say that, you know, like while the stories were okay and they weren't terrible and all this different stuff, I don't know, I haven't gone back and watched all of it. It probably would make me want to just leave this earth. But I think like the way I filmed it, like, you know, the posing obviously was terrible. I would like to reshoot some stuff and make it more impactful if that makes sense and like the cinematography of it would be a lot better But as far as like just a match that I wish I'd made or a story that I had changed or taken in a different direction I don't think so like because it's so planned out and it's it's been written out for so long that I think um, I'm, I, I've been pretty happy with the script and everything So I don't think I would change a story or take it in a different direction at least not off the top of my head Maybe if I spent more time on it, but at this juncture not really that was a great question by NLW this next question, guys, comes from Paul Chaffe or Chaffe or ch Chicken Strips. If Mattel ever did a best of Ruthless Aggression era Elite Wave, who would you put in it and what attire? I would personally do two waves. The first wave being Raw's best and the second being SmackDown's best. That would be absolutely incredible if they were to do that, like a Raw's best Ruthless Aggression era, like three Elites, and then if they did a SmackDown's best Ruthless Aggression era and did three Elites, that would be really, really cool. But if we did a best of Ruthless Aggression era Elite Wave, off the top of my head, I would obviously want, like, Ruthless Aggression Shawn Michaels is something that I would want immediately. Like, we don't have any really Ruthless Aggression Shawn Michaels, so that would be something that I would be imperative on. Since Edge is under contract, I'd probably do another Edge. I'd want to see another Batista if that's possible. If RVD is getting a figure, I'd love to see another of him. Randy Orton's another one. And then, of course, you gotta throw a John Cena in there. I feel like a John Cena is, is something that I would love to see. And then there's some legends, obviously. Eddie Guerrero comes to mind. Kurt Angle comes to mind. I don't even know if they can make him anymore, but you get the idea. I would even like to see, you know, a Hulk Hogan or something like that, but that's a really good question right there. That would be amazing. I can imagine, like, sick-ass Raw and SmackDown packaging. Christian Billick asks, when searching for a figure, how do you know that it's not overly priced and if it's worth it? This is a really good question. Typically, how I go about buying a figure if it's not at retail, like say I want an elite Seth Rollins in a certain gear and I look up that figure on eBay, I already predetermined how much I'm willing to spend in my head. So I'll think about a figure and I'm like, how bad do I want this figure? And I'll determine a price in my head. I'm like, 35 is the max I'm paying for this figure. And if I don't find it for that price, I usually do not buy it. Like there's rare times that I spend more than I absolutely have to just because like I'm pretty good about waiting on things or or searching out trades or searching out deals or waiting for deals I'm pretty good about that or I'd like to think I am which is why I don't have every single figure that I could want of course you look around the room and you're like Jesus Christ you literally have every figure but there are figures that I have not purchased simply because the price isn't right and I'm not willing to just fork out a bunch of money for no reason I want to sit on that I want to be you know economically smart be smart with your money live better Walmart you know what I'm saying but that was excellent Excellent question by Christian Billick. Kind of predetermine how much you want to spend. And if you want to, you know, take that extra step for a five, ten extra bucks, then do that. But don't get crazy with it. Wait on stuff unless it's like a holy grail figure. It's all about personal preference. And if you think a figure is worth it, look at reviews, look at different things. You know the vision you have in your mind. So just take that into consideration. Little Baller asked, was, what was it like for you when you were starting to pick fed? Was it for business or was it just for fun? It was absolutely all for fun. Of course, now that the channel has grown, like if the 
the pick fed was for business purposes, I would probably be doing the pick fed way more often. You know, if I just absolutely wanted to cash in on that and get that out just for money purposes, yeah, I probably could. But it was all for fun. The whole channel was just fun starting out that, you know, hopefully one day I'd be able to make some money off of it. And I'm very blessed and fortunate enough to be able to make some money off of my channel that I'm absolutely thankful for every single day. And a huge shout out to you guys. Love you guys so much for making that dream or that, you know, aspiration even possible. A huge thank you to you guys. If you could book, CSW Wrestling says, if you could book a superstar that is not in MDT yet, how would you book them and who would it be? Eel face, hardcore, a faint Undertaker type character. Uh, I guess you're kind of saying, you know, who is one guy that's not in the pick fed that I would really love to bring into the pick fed and how would I book them? For some reason, like Darby Allen is some guy that I really want to bring into the show. I feel like him and Kevin Owens would have a bunch of bangers, you know, all around the, you know, the extreme division. Um, there's obviously, we've gotten so many great figures of certain guys that I would love to use. Another one that comes to mind is Adam Hangman Page, you know, MJF. Like, there's so many, like, good AEW guys that I would love to bring in and just work with the current roster and, like, you know, develop these storylines here and there. So, yeah, I feel like, you know, a lot of AEW guys really is what I'm trying to say. Shadow asks, what is the most underrated figure of all time? What made you start a pick fed? And what's your opinion on AEW having unrealistic spots? I don't really care about the unrealistic spots. Um, you know, like, I'm not big on core choreography in wrestling so like obviously a lot of it is choreographed but I don't like where you're waiting on a guy who's waiting on a guy who's got to be in perfect position and this and we're waiting on this spot and people are waiting on the outside I like everything to flow naturally so that is not just an AEW thing that's just a wrestling thing in general but like crazy spots I love like crazy you know over the top stuff like um I don't know it's kind of hard to think of something off the top of my head but you know like Pentagon and Phoenix the way they wrestle and stuff like that and the Young Bucks sometimes I, pr I can appreciate wrestling like that as long as it's not too choreographed, which is why I'm not, I used to not really like Ricochet's matches, matches that much, like when he was on the independent scene, like when he would wrestle Will Ospreay, stuff like that. Never been a big fan of stuff like that, so that's about where I can go. However, I do appreciate their athleticism and their talent, though. What made me start my pick fed was literally, it was actually, like I thought of the MDT championship first, and then I thought about the figure of the year would win the MDT championship and it would hold it, and then I thought, screw that, let's like make a wrestling figure fed and I hadn't even I, I had no idea what other pick feds were I had never seen them before which is probably why my fed was so trash to begin with is because I had never known what feds were I never knew what a pick fed was I just kind of started doing it and then I kind of learned the ropes a little bit learned exactly how people did it and the way you do it and you know what people like and things of that nature and that kind of grew from there but it all just kind of started as an idea but it wasn't like a specific fed that I saw or anything like that and what is the most underrated figure of all time? I'd say Ultimate Edition Ronda Rousey. I feel like a lot of people sleep on that figure, and it's just the best, man. It's so good. It's just the best. I mean, I don't really know what to say. Like, nobody brings it up as one of the best Ultimate Editions, and it's just overall just an amazing figure. If you don't own it, get it. It's it's fantastic. Shop, aka HTW, says, why do you like the Oval IC title design, and would you add it to the pick fed? I don't know why I love it so much. I think it's just nostalgia purposes. That's the title that I grew up with when I was a kid. That was the Intercontinental Championship. You know, some of my favorite guys always held the title. Kurt Angle, Chris Benoit, Chris Jericho. You know, those were my favorites growing up. And I just always love the title. It's just super nostalgic for me. I had it in toy belt form. I won many uh, Intercontinental Championship matches in my backyard, doing swanton bombs off of my house, all of those different things with the oval Intercontinental title. So that's probably why I like it the most. It's just nostalgic, and I love it. And then would you add to the pick fed? Probably not, just because when I started the pick fed, I wanted it to be super custom, man. I wanted the arena to be custom, the graphics, the show the ring, the ring ropes, the titles, microphones, money in the bank. I wanted all of that to be completely custom, so probably not unless I did like a title design based off of it, and then I tweaked it a little bit kind of to like pay homage to it maybe, but not the original design. No, I would not. Trixton Vanderhoff asks, what's your favorite storyline heading into My Damn Nation? I think for me, there's like a few going in there. I think I'll give you my top three, I guess, but my favorite one has got to be uh, the Kenny Omega, you know, Resurrection D demon storyline that we've got going on right now. It's been booked so, like, it's it's so intricate and it's so deep and, like, it's so fun to, like, create for that. So, that's probably my all-time favorite storyline, just the, the way we've done it and how long it's taken and the payoff and everything like that is still in the works and stuff. So, that one I really love. I love the Shield storyline or the Seth Rollins Royal Rumble storyline 
which is absolutely beautiful seeing Roman Reigns and the way with the shield and everything like that absolutely love that with the MDT championship and then another one I really like is got to be Kevin Owens and the extreme championship division you know ever since he showed up on MDT live he took that championship by storm and he's never looked back and he's just been an unstoppable threat until you know he's met the beast right now so we're, we're gonna see where that goes so those are probably my top three but great question BSTW TV 14 says yes I was asking for this and we got it has fatherhood changed your view on life and I would say yes for sure because you know like you're you kind of manage another life and you know I want the best possible life for my son and my wife so fatherhood definitely changes your view on life absolutely 100% and you know you want to lead them in the right way and guide them the right way and so I would say absolutely no doubt about it youngster official says with the recent WWE releases are you going to keep them in NDT or release them as well I don't typically like to release people just because WWE does it because this is my own roster you know like I unless it's like something crazy I guess you know, I, I don't want to release them. But just because Braun Strowman gets released in WWE doesn't mean I'm just going to cancel all plans for him because, you know, that's it doesn't have an effect on me unless it's literally something that I don't view that I need to book them anymore. Then RJW Corporation says, when will more Fed episodes will start kicking off? And I honestly, I wish I had a better answer for this because I'm doing my absolute best. It's just a lot. If it, Like, it's just a lot, man. It's just so much. And I wish that I could post. I wish I could post them every single day like if i could post them every single day and that was realistic and we could just flow through the shows and flow through the pay-per-views like i said on many occasions i would absolutely do that the only answer i can really give you is soon and i'm doing my absolute best like i want it completed just like you guys i want it progressed you know like i have all these visions and all these things i want to accomplish and it's very frustrating you know it's super frustrating when you have these visions and you have these things you want to do and like you just don't have the time to do them or there's like certain setbacks and things that you can't get done and it is very frustrating and it takes a toll on you mentally and physically and emotionally so all I can really say is soon and just hang in there guys because it's going to be worth it as it always is and I really appreciate your guys patience and I appreciate you guys wanting to see it and asking the questions and loving it and all of that it means the absolute world to me and all I can say is soon but I hope to God that it's very soon because I want it again I want it just like you guys but I just appreciate you guys and uh, hopefully it will be very very soon JRS Wrestling says you're a pretty big YouTuber YouTuber. I don't think I am, but I appreciate the compliment, if that is a compliment. Do you feel stress at all? And how? And if so, how do you deal with it? And I would say that everybody has stress in some form. Of course, does this channel bring me stress? I would say yes, for sure, especially like PickFed related. Like, God, that just sends me down a rabbit hole. But my biggest ways of dealing with stress would be, you know, I like to play sports. So I like to go to the gym. I like to play basketball, pick up, you know, basketball. I like to go to the gym and lift or work out or exercise. I like to spend time with my family, my son, my wife, my brother, my mom and dad, you know, family. Time is obviously a great way to relieve stress and obviously keeping God number one, you know. But yeah, I would say everybody feels stress at some level. I don't think you can really, I don't think you're human if you can not be stressed about things at all so yeah that's a that's an interesting one i think his name's ian or it's eowyn eowyn carolyn says will you ever use match types like ultimate x or war games in the pick fed and i've always wanted to i've always loved the old ultimate x you know or or war games the actual pay-per-view after my damn nation is Warzone, or it's going to be something esque and it will have a war games match in it so yes i absolutely have wanted to do that again it's just about getting there and getting all these dead gum things done so hmm Mm -hmm. Redstone Dragon asks, what would you do to make Raw watchable? And the first thing that I would do, Brad, is cut it to two hours. I know that it's not completely in their hands. I think the USA Network has something to do with that. However, cutting it to two hours would be something that I would absolutely do. I would eliminate the filler stuff, like stuff that just does not matter. If you do not have a direction for it, if you do not have a plan for it, don't air it. It should not go on your television show. If it doesn't mean anything, do not show it. Random vignettes of Mojo Raleigh looking in a mirror and stuff that you can completely write off two weeks later three weeks later retribution is a great example like things like that don't put it on the show if it doesn't have a significance if it doesn't have any importance whatsoever don't book it don't write it don't even look at it i think that would relieve a lot of their problems but also constant rematches constant insulting of the intelligence of the viewer constantly rewriting and writing stuff last minute 
I mean, I could go on. It could be his own video, man. How to make Raw good again. Just make stuff matter, man. That's the biggest thing, too. Nothing matters today in WWE, man. And this is the last question of the video. It says, Sheesh CJ says, Would you be interested in releasing your very own MDT action figure? I personally would find that to be very awesome. And yes, this is something that I'm kind of working on right now. I'm trying to figure out the ins and outs of it. If you guys would be interested in that, please let me know. I'm working on getting a head sculpt made. You know, I want it to have all of my tattoos. I want it to be a, a cool gear. Uh, I want it to look like me, obviously. So I'm getting with a 3D guy to try to make a custom head sculpt. There's a lot of different things going into it. But if you guys would be interested in an MDT figure for your action figure pick feds or just your shelf in general or just your collection or whatever you would want, please let me know down in the comment section below. And what is about the amount? Because, you know, it's got to make sense business-wise as far as, you know, like, it's got to be affordable. I want it to be good. I don't want it to be janky and garbage. I want it to be very good and detailed and feel good in the hand. Like, everything I love about a figure, I want it to represent that if it's me in a figure. And uh, maybe I could hook up some accessories to it. Maybe a t-shirt. Maybe uh, I could get with somebody and maybe get some MDT championships made or something. I don't know exactly the whole ins and outs of it. I'm still working on that, but that is a great question. It's something that I'm seriously trying to figure out and if there would be packaging for it, if there would be other things. There's just a lot of stuff that I'm trying to work on for it, but if you guys would be interested in an MDT Elite or an MDT figure itself, I feel like making it out of Mattel parts would probably be the best thing. So we'll just see about that, but if you guys would be interested in that, again, please let me know. But that is going to do it for the Q&A video, man. I don't even know how long this video is. Uh, I wanted it to go about 10 minutes, so we'll just see about that, but the random shout-out today is going to go to everybody that asked me a question, man. You guys are absolute beasts. Maybe we can do a part two if you guys, if, you're, if your question was not answered, I apologize. There's like 450 comments or something on here, so I do apologize for that, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it anyway, and if you guys will, please go follow me on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at MyDamnToys. Trying to get the TikTok following up right there, so that would really mean a lot to me, but thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and a huge shout out to everybody that left me a comment on the community tab, and uh, if you made it this far in the thing, don't cross the line, and uh, yeah, you don't want to do that, because I did once. One time, I crossed the line. You want to know how I did that? I... You crossed the line, I've been...